Ongoing federal, state, and local partnerships, the MBTA has committed to ensuring the Wellesley Square commuter rail station is accessible to everyone, moving us towards a more inclusive and accessible public transportation system. I want to emphasize that this would not be possible without the many years of advocacy by the Fahey and O'Hanlon families who are here behind me this, this morning. And I would also like to thank um, our Congresswoman Catherine Clark, who played a very significant role in get, making this happen because she secured the funding. And we can all have great ideas, great intent, great advocacy, but without the funding, nothing is going to happen. So I would like to now introduce my friend and former colleague, uh, the whip of the, U <laughs> the U.S. House of Representatives, Congresswoman Catherine Clark. Oh, good morning, and what a beautiful morning it is. And thank you, Representative Paish, for your friendship, for your leadership, and your partnership on this critical project. And what a privilege to join you all in celebrating not only Disability Pride Month, but marking 34 years since the ADA was signed into law. Thank you to my friends and partners, Lieutenant Governor Driscoll, Phil Eng, Hayes Morrison, and the entire MassDOT team, Megan Jopp, and everyone who serves the town of Wellesley. Above all, thank you to the hardworking advocates here today, Liz, William, Lorraine, and Daniel. Thank you for carrying the torch of an extraordinary movement for dignity, and opportunity for caring for the work of those remarkable activists who came before you. Justin Dart, the father of the ADA, warned that its passage was not the end. He said, the ADA is not equality and it is not employment. ADA is a promise to be kept and you are making sure that our country keeps that promise. This project is just one more victory in that fight. I am proud to have secured the $500,000 to build a more accessible Wellesley Square Station, to build a more interconnected Massachusetts, to deliver an easier commute for base staters like William and Daniel, who just want to get to work. This is what public policy looks like when it's driven by values, when it prioritizes people. What a perfect example of how government should work. Federal, state, and local officials partnering with grassroots advocates, all working to identify a problem, identify a solution, and identify the resources to implement. It has been an honor to play my part alongside each of you. And it is so moving to see the work of so many people come to fruition. This is one of many more victories to come. Thank you again for your work and for having me here today. Thank you very much, uh, Congresswoman Clark. And it's now my pleasure to introduce one of my state partners, uh, Lieutenant Governor Kim Driscoll. Thank you, Representative Peich. It's great to be here with so many, particularly Congresswoman Clark, who's been such a terrific partner to our administration, not only helping to bring back resources, but helping us understand the best way to leverage all of the resources at the federal government that are available, both on the policy side and on the dollar side. We've been so fortunate uh, over the last 18 months, we've been able to recover $7 billion in federal funds for projects big and small, and in particular for projects like this, improving commuter rail stations, making them more accessible for all, um, this is one of an example of projects, frankly led by this half million dollar investment, that will serve uh, a number of stations, commuter rail stations and uh, green line stations throughout the Commonwealth to help us build in more accessibility. Um, it is something that our administration is focused on as when we think about the work that we're doing, the investments we're making, you'll often hear the governor and myself say we want to build a Commonwealth that's more affordable, 
more accessible, uh, more equitable, and certainly more competitive. And this investment and many more like it really hearken to those values. Um, we are a state that prides ourselves on being first. We're, we're one of the states that has the first public subway system, and we're paying the price for some of that. Uh, and that's why these investments really matter. As a nearly 400-year-old state, complying with the ADA law can present some unique challenges. So we have to be intentional. Many high platforms, putting in place accessibility is not something that we can take for granted. I say that as the mayor of a community, former mayor of a community, that has the busiest commuter rail stop in the system and for a long time did not have access platforms up until an investment made by the state to ensure that's happening. The particular investments we're making along with this $500,000 are also part of the fair share funding. Those are dollars that residents are paying. So this team approach, working at the local level with our city and town partners, working with our partners in the legislature, so fortunate to be able to work with Rep Peich, um, and her colleagues as we build out budgets and make significant investments in building a more affordable commonwealth and then our federal partners with Catherine Clark. It really is a team approach and led by advocates who have helped remind us the importance of these investments. Again, something we're not taking for granted. So I'm grateful that we're able to celebrate today here in Wellesley and know that this is not the only project that we're working on. There are many others aimed at ensuring that Massachusetts remains a place that is equitable for all. So thrilled to be here. Can't wait to see a little bit more of the actual station upgrades that we'll be making. And um, I'm going to turn it back over to Representative Peich. Since I've completely messed up the order, it's my fault. You know what it is. <laughs> Thank you. Not, not at all. Thank you very much, Lieutenant Governor. Um, we are now going to hear from the general manager, uh, Phil Ng. And I would just like to say in my um, too many years to uh, say, years of experience advocating for uh, commuter rail uh, quality service. Um, th this general manager is the first person that I have met with over the years who instead of giving me an excuse as to why things were not working, uh, told me how he could fix it. And I think this is a perfect example of that. So I am very pleased to introduce the general manager, Phil Ng. Thank you, Representative Peich. Um, I have to admit, it really is a team effort, uh, not only at the MBTA, but a team across uh, the state, local, and federal levels. And, and today we're here to celebrate that. Um, thank you, Leader Clark, uh, for your hosting us today and, and for your leadership. Thank you, Lieutenant Governor Driscoll, and to your entire Healy Driscoll administration for the leadership and commitment to public transit and the importance of improving accessibility for all that use public transit system. I'd also like to thank uh, Governor Councilor um, Petito Devaney and Executive Director Jopp for representing the community this morning. I'd like to thank MassDOT Under Secretary Hayes Morrison for also championing this work, as well as Swammer Arzer, Chief of Project Delivery and Supplemental Work with Keolis for helping us to deliver on the capital construction. And lastly, I'd like to personally thank Liz and Will Fahey and Lorraine and Daniel O'Hanlon, as others have, uh, without their advocacy and their commitment and dedication um, we might not be standing here today, uh, but also all the other local residents who have worked so hard to elevate the need for better accessibility by sharing their stories, working collaboratively with us, and finding real solutions. We believe that all community members deserve access to the public transit system, and it should be reliable, it should be safe, and we acknowledge our system has much more work to do, but we're committed to finding solutions and delivering for all of the diverse communities that we serve. The MBTA is committed to funding and designing and constructing stations with full high-level platforms as part of its long-term accessibility goals. Uh, but this cannot be done without the intersectional support and collaboration, as I said earlier, across federal, state, and local government, as well as our community members. Personally, I'd like to thank Leader Clark for securing that $500,000 in federal dollars to help us ensure that ADA compliance at local commuter rail stations such as here um, can be available for everyone that needs it. And we're committed to making these precious dollars go as far as we can. And at this station, we're proud to share that we're adding two accessible freestanding mini high platforms. And for those unfamiliar with what a mini high platform is, they provide level boarding with train cars. And they're about 45 to 60 feet in length. Here at this station, it's 52. Um, in addition to the mini high platforms, we will add ramps to make the platforms accessible, canopies, wayfinding, emergency call boxes, variable message screens, and the EMS and other assets to make this station fit for everybody. And work is underway to accomplish this and scheduled to be completed in January. 
These freestanding mini high platforms represent only an interim solution, but a viable solution for all, aimed at providing safe and accessible service more quickly and cost effectively. As I mentioned earlier, collaboration is imperative to us at the T as we work to make the entire system more accessible. On behalf of the system-wide accessibility team, I'd like to thank all of those folks, uh, our, our assistant general manager, Laura Brelsford, who could not be here today, but Rob Sanson, director of system-wide accessibility, who is here today, um, back in the back by the um, T sign. Thank you, Rob. Um, and always welcome to join us at the Riders Transportation Accessibility Group, the RTAG meetings, to provide input that helps our accessibility planning Thanks again for all and celebrating ADA with us and the improvements that come here at Wellesley Station Square, or Square Station. <laughs> the MBTA is looking forward to continuing and making our stations accessible, safe, and for everybody that needs them and wants to use them. Thank you very much. Uh, it is now my pleasure to introduce the Mass Department of, of Transportation Under Secretary Hayes Morrison. Thank you, everyone. It is an honor to be here today. I'd like to give my sincerest thanks to Lieutenant Governor Driscoll, Congresswoman Clark, Representative Peisch, General Manager Ng, Megan Yap, and the ADA community for being here and celebrating with all of us. Secretary Monica tibbetts nutt unfortunately, cannot be here today, but she sends her regrets and is also just very happy to see all of these system upgrades that we are doing in partnership with the MBTA and with the great leadership of General Manager Ng. Today is, a, is joyful and is meaningful, not just for the, the people that are here, but for everyone who now gets to fully enjoy this system and this stop. It is our mission at MassDOT and the MBTDA to provide the best service to our customers throughout the Commonwealth. We are happy today to honor, recognize, and celebrate the crucial role that all of you play in, the, in shaping our future and understanding this mission. We strive to provide transportation options that make everyone feel supported, safe, and equal. Specifically, we are happy to present this platform and this access to this station here in Wellesley, but we look forward to taking this funding and any additional funding that the federal or state government <laughs> um, feel free to give us to promise and do even more. Today marks our commitment to accessibility and ongoing efforts to make necessary improvements so that everyone can travel through the system with ease and comfort. I am proud to mark this moment with all of you. And with that, I am pleased, whoops, actually, am I the one who's going to hand it over to Megan? Okay, I will just go ahead and do that. And with that, I am pleased to welcome Director of Government Services for the Town of Wellesley and to also thank the Town of Wellesley for having us here today, Megan Jopp. Thank you. Thank you, good, thank you and good morning. Uh, we are thrilled to have the Lieutenant Governor here and Congresswoman Clark and Representative Price as well as Under Secretary Morrison and um, GM Manager. Thank you all for being here. The Town of Wellesley is so thankful for the support and leadership in particular of Congresswoman Clark and Representative Peich who have worked diligently with the MBTA to make Wellesley Square accessible. This is a long overdue and really exciting day. We are grateful for Congresswoman Clark in securing the funding to help modify our commuter rail stations in Wellesley so they are accessible to everyone, and the MBTA for their ingenuity. I cannot express the time and lengths they've taken to be able to install these mini highs. It, it's really remarkable. Accessibility for all is critical to the town's goals, in particular for transportation, housing, climate, and economic development. More importantly, this directly aligns with the diversity, equity, and inclusion work the town and our residents are currently doing to ensure all individuals feel included and have equal opportunities. In this case, easy and equitable accommodations to key transportation options between Worcester and Boston. This will allow for work, for school, for social activities, and more importantly, for personal freedom. Many in Wellesley have waited a very long time for these modifications, in particular the Fahey's and the O'Hanlon's. And um, to eliminate barriers and open doors to transport that gives them the opportunity and independence to live their lives to the fullest. We thank you all very much.
Uh, it is now um, my pleasure to introduce uh, members of the Wellesley Disability Advocacy Community, community Will and Liz Fahey, and Daniel and Lorraine O'Hanlon. All right. Thank you. Um, I have been waiting a long time for this to happen this day. Um, I have been working with the Boston Red Sox for 10 years, and I couldn't get in the city, uh, you know, regarding uh, transportation uh, because it, I ha had to miss work a few times uh, because of uh, the transportation issue. Uh, and I live in Wellesley, uh, and I also know that um, it would give me a really good independence uh, to be able to uh, go on the train to go to work every day. And um, I would have to say that, uh, you know, it would give me a very good independence and uh, in a way that basically um, it's just a way to, um, you know, help other people like myself um but i also feel like there's a way that you know th this is always a dream come true to be able to see it happen and to be able to build, put it into reality um many years and many dollars were spent by the town of wellesley special ed department um, to prepare well to be as independent as possible for adult life when we moved into an affordable and accessible condo right across the street and we rolled over to do some travel training so he could get to his job at Fenway Park uh, the train conductor pulled up and said I don't have a way to get him aboard um, fortunately on that day nine years ago several good Samaritans lifted his wheelchair and helped him ride that was the last time Will boarded the train in this station. Ever since that day nine years ago, Will and I have been advocating for change along with the O'Hanlons and many others. On this 34th anniversary of the ADA, as you reference Congresswoman Clark, I truly feel emotional reflecting on the tireless advocacy of others and the impact of people before us to make many things possible for Will. And I feel immense gratitude that our efforts have been success for Will, Daniel, and the countless others who can now access public transportation from Wellesley. Without the never-ending commitment and, um, and collaboration of many great individuals, some of whom are here today and some are not, these efforts never would have materialized. I'd like to take a moment to acknowledge and profoundly thank the following people for their integral role in making today's announcement possible. Congresswoman. Catherine Clark, State Representative Alice Peisch, Town of Wellesley Executive Director Megan Jopp, Town of Wellesley Vice Chair of the Select Board Colette O'Frank, who sadly is not here, uh, Joshua Ostroff, a civic leader who now I believe works at the MBTA, was integral at helping to make a lot of connections, and last but not least, um, the Director of Statewide Accessible, Accessibility for the MBTA, Laura Brelsford, along with her dedicated team, Rob Sampson and Jennifer um, Ross, who are here today. Um, just, I, I can't underscore the value in having departments like the Department of Systemwide Accessibility, who are dedicated to ensuring that voices of people with disabilities are included in their decisions and making sure progress keeps moving forward. Such creative, problem solvers and so much appreciation to all of you to be here and celebrate this really joyous day thank you Dear morning, my name is Daniel O'Hanlon. I grew up in Wellesley, less than a mile from the Wellesley Hills Honeyland Rail Station, and attended Wellesley Hundred Schools. Thanks to the high priority that the town and the state of Massachusetts 
places on education and healthcare, I enjoyed an excellent and fully inclusive educational experience despite my physical disability. I went on to graduate from Johnson College. During college, I began working in Dawson and now had a job that requires me to be in the financial district three days a week. Since my first job five years ago, transportation has been a major obstacle to achieving my goals. I can't drive a car and a hop the train or any other driver transportation option. My family has had to drive me to work at great cost to my independence and inconvenience for them. For me, this station accessibility includes its represent freedom and independence. Like other disabled people, I just want the same opportunities for access as everyone else. I am grateful to all here for the dedication and efforts to finally enable all writers, regardless of their ability, to take the train from us. Thank you. Hello, everyone. My name's Lorraine O'Hanlon, and I'm Daniel's mother. And when I became the parent of a disabled child, I immediately and unconsciously began to view the world through a bifurcated lens, a double vision of sorts. On the one hand, of course, I naturally viewed things uh, from the perspective of an able-bodied person. But simultaneously, I began to view everything from the viewpoint of someone with disabilities and what challenges and obstacles a situation might present to them. We've lived in Wellesley for 26 years now, and I've gotten to know many people, many wonderful people in town. When I mentioned to them over the years that I was doing advocacy work to ensure that one of the Wellesley train stations, one of the three, would be made wheelchair accessible, people were shocked residents were totally shocked and the reason they were shocked is because most of them had absolutely no idea that you could not get on a train in Wellesley and commute into Boston and it's not because they don't care about the issue it's because they simply did not know that the issue existed because most people are viewing the world through a single lens and it's the able-bodied lens and so as they rode the train to and from Boston in their daily lives, it didn't, it didn't necessarily occur to them how someone in a wheelchair with mobility issues would get on the train. And a problem like train station accessibility is a daunting one uh, because of, as we've said, seen, there are many levels of collaboration required between local state and, and state and federal partners and, and funding as well. When my friend Liz and I met for coffee back in 2019 to discuss this issue, we were just two moms determined to find a way for our sons who worked in Boston to ride the commuter rail. Thankfully, we learned that help was available to us through the MBTA's Department of System-Wide Accessibility. Their entire mission is to see things through that bifurcated lens. It's been 34 years since the ADA was signed into law as we know but there's still much work to be done to ensure equal access for all. But this creative and pragmatic solution for station accessibility gives me tremendous hope. To all the people Liz thanked, I concur, and please be assured that the lives of disabled families and disabled individuals will be transformed by your work. We are extremely grateful. Thank you. Thank you very much for those um, very moving uh, words. And I think it's, it's just terrific to have with us people who are actually going to benefit from this so that it's meaningful. So um, we are now, uh, the speakers are now going to uh, stand over here for a little photo op with the check. So I'd invite all of the speakers to come together here. And I'd like the um, Rob, Will Rob, and Daniel, Rob, if you could be up front here. Yeah. Right next to Luke. 
Lieutenant Governor. Rob, I'm going to put you right here. 